Kodong Jangta Monastery was founded in India by Turchan Tolku Chimed Ringzen Rinpoche in 1995 to protect and preserve his lineage of Buddhist teachings, which he brought with him from Tibet in the 1940s as instructed by his teacher. Before passing away, Chime Rinzin Rinpoche handed over to his son Andongsi, Tulko Oigen Chencho, the task of managing the activities of his monastery in India and leading his students as his principal regent. Tulko Oigen Chencho, together with his wife Shashi, took the responsibility to build the Gompa in accordance with the tradition of the Jiangta and Kordong lineage. This stupa was built on the cremation ground where Turchin Tulkuchi Med Ringzin Rinpoche's body was cremated in 2002. It is filled with all the teachings of the Lord Buddha, together with the teachings of the Kordang Jiangta lineage, radiating his blessing to all sentient beings. Chengdu, third largest city in China, is the capital city of Sichuan province, home of the Kordong Monastery birthplace of the Kordong Jiangta lineage. Chengdu is a stronghold of Tibetan Buddhist culture and an essential source of Buddhist artifacts, supplying monasteries around the province. Our journey to the source of the Kordong Jiangta lineage starts here. It will take us more than 26 hours driving to reach our first destination, known as Sikchung Gompa. The monastery was founded 300 years ago and is rooted in the teachings of Jiangta lineage, discovered in the 14th century by the great yogi known as Rigzin Godam. This tradition is also known as the teachings of the northern treasures. In Sichuan, there are only three monasteries following these teachings, Sikchong, Kordong, and Bane Gompa. We are now in the grasslands. The Mani Mantra appears everywhere, and the architecture has clearly changed. The length of the journey and the state of roads require regular breaks. The deeper we go, the more we see the tents of the herders and large groups of yaks grazing in the wild. But noticeably, the majority of the houses, as well as the temples that we pass, seem newly built. From valley to valley, the landscape changes dramatically. We are now getting close to our first destination, Sikchung Monastery in a beautiful and peaceful environment. As fate would have it, a puncture gives us additional time and we stop at the holy place of Kandro Senye, introduced here by the abbot of Kordong Monastery, Tulku Chime Gelsen. In the 19th century, the great saint known as Nudan Dorje Dropan Lingpa, locally referred to as Turchan Rinpoche, revealed hidden Buddhist teachings from this large rock which is known locally as Khandro Senye. These teachings had been hidden and concealed by Padmasambhava, founder of Vajrayana Buddhism in Tibet during the 8th century, in order for them to be revealed in future times by the appropriate incarnation of one of his closest disciples. This delegation from Kordong Gompa is traveling to Sikchong Monastery to celebrate the inauguration of his Zangdol Palri temple. Originally a monastery of the Sakyapa school, it was given to Turchen Rinpoche's uncle, Kantro Shira Meba, of the Zhangta tradition in the 18th century, and since then has been a place where the teachings and practices of the northern treasures of Rigzin Godem still flourish. As with other such places in the region, 
It suffered destruction and repression during the Cultural Revolution. But the monastery and its community went through these difficult times without giving up their faith and tradition. <laughs> <laughs> Today is August the 19th, 2010, the 10th day of the lunar month, and the whole community and its guests are celebrating the inauguration and blessing of the newly built three-story Zangdopari temple. Such a construction is very symbolic, as it represents the abode of Padmasambhava. Tulku Chime Dorje is the abbot of Sikchong Monastery and has been recognized as the incarnation of Tulku Gyorme Dorje from Kordong. And it is under his supervision that this new temple dedicated to Padmasambhava was built next to the original prayer hall. In recognition of this auspicious occasion, Dongsi Tulku Ulgen Chengcho from Kordong Gyangcha Monastery in India made the symbolic gift of Turchan Tulku Chime Rigzin's robes to Sikchong Monastery for them to be kept in the new temple as a symbol of the connection between Sikchung Monastery and Kordong Jangta Monastery in India. The gift was received and honored by Tulku Chime Dorje on the second floor of the Zangdo Palri Temple. The rituals have been going on for the past three days and all the monks and the lay community have gathered here. Inside the Zangdolpari temple, the rituals are led by the highly respected Tulku Chirki Nima, incarnation of Tulku Sola of Sikchong, together with Onpu Dechen and other Tulkus, Kenpos and monks. On the ground floor, the statue of Padmasambhava presides over his two main consorts, Yeshe Sogyal and Mandarava surrounded by his 25 main disciples. After the rituals are completed, the statues are considered to be alive and the hall fully blessed. The final part of the ritual takes place outside in a very casual but profound way. The remaining monks continue to recite prayers inside.
Throughout the rituals, the public has been receiving teachings in the courtyard of the main prayer hall. At the end of a long day, after taking some time to meet friends and family, they all go back to their respective homes and tents. Sikchong Monastery is located on the banks of a river and is well protected by hills. It's a place rich in forests and grazing areas for the yaks. A new retreat center has been built and it's here that a new generation of practitioners will be given the chance to do their traditional three years, three months, three days retreat, in good and comfortable conditions. Away from the monastery, away from the daily activities, surrounded by silence. The trumpets announce the arrival of dignitaries. Fresh juniper is being burnt as an offering to purify the surrounding air, and everybody is getting ready to go ahead and receive the guests with respect and gratitude. The large umbrella is known as the Umbrella of the Victorious Ones and is a symbol of the knowledge and the enlightened mind of those who uphold the teachings of the Buddha Dharma. In the past, the convoy would have consisted of horses, flags and banners. But in the modern day, the cars create a dramatic escort and an air of grandeur. Today's visitor is coming from a nearby monastery of the Kagyupa school. Karma Sonam is in his late 90s and is revered in the valley for his wisdom and realization. As abbot of a neighboring monastery, he comes to pay respect to the new temple, give his blessings to the community, 
and make strong aspirations for the spreading of the teachings from the new Zangdal Palri Temple. <laughs> Monks and lay people greet him with long kataks, the traditional white scarf, a symbol of purity of minds and intention. <laughs> Karma Sonam is welcomed by all the monks of Sikchung Monastery waiting to receive his blessing. Due to his old age and years of sitting cross-legged in meditation, he now needs to be carried. But his mind is still razor sharp and his heart full of joy like a child. Such a visit is also a good chance to catch up with old acquaintances. Once everyone has received his blessing and some attention, it's time to take a break and quietly enjoy a good cup of butter tea, while the crowd of lay people gather in the temple compound to receive the blessings and oral transmission from the precious one. It is now time for Kama Sonam to make strong aspirations in a deep state of concentration. A time to pray deeply for the teachings of Padmasambhava to spread out from the new temple and benefit all sentient beings by the blessings of the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. I don't want to. 
His visit brings to a close the four-day inauguration of this powerful, beautiful Lakan. While the lay audience is listening to the last part of the teachings on the suspicious occasion, the monks are preparing the food for the final communal meal for everyone at the Gompa. At the close of the four-day ceremony, as everyone was due to depart, an auspicious event occurred bringing joy to everyone. A strong storm broke, accompanied by lightning and heavy rain, followed by a rainbow traversing the valley, a sign that the inauguration of the Zangdal Palri Lakang had been successful. The next morning after a family gathering at Tulku Chime Dorje's house, came the time to say goodbye, exchange the last words, take the last photos, offer thanks and good wishes. Bye bye, bye bye. See you again. We're on the road again, heading towards Kordong Monastery, driving for the next 12 to 14 hours, passing through the grasslands and the main towns of Serta and Trango. In Trango, the main town closest to Kordong Monastery, we have to take the opportunity to shop, particularly at the best stocked wet market in the region. Fresh yak, pork, poultry, and a wide range of vegetables. Fresh wild mushrooms and butter. This is our last chance to buy supplies. Approaching Kordong Monastery, we enter the Droma Zalmagong. Many, many people join the Tonka. Painting Tonka. Painting Tonka, yeah, yeah. Very famous place. Night house uh, is a very chimney uh, in Jimbochi. Boy, boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is the city. 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 This is the city
Soni is where Kodong Turchin, Nudan Dorje Dropan Limpa, discovered many hidden teachings in the 19th century, which form the core of the Kodong lineage. The corner house is where the great masters, Kordong Turchin Nudan Dorje, Sangzim Gompo Wangyal, as well as Sonam Oza lived, bringing us closer to Kordong Monastery and its history. At last, after traveling from the monastery in India, we are now eventually at our final destination, Kordong Monastery, the place of origin of the teachings of our root guru. This new bridge has just been completed this year, allowing cars and trucks to reach the monastery. Until then, only horses could go up, crossing the river by the old wooden bridge. Now we have new bridge. We have finally arrived, and while some continue with their prostrations, others come out to greet the return of their abbot and the other tulkus. Thanks to the efforts of various Tulkus and their disciples, and the leadership of their abbot, Tulku Chimei Gelsen, who personally supervises all the construction work and gives direction to the various laborers and craftsmen, we are now looking at the newly rebuilt temple of Kordong Monastery. The whole building has been built using only local stone and timber. Each pillar has been hand engraved and sculpted, a true work of art. This new prayer hall comprises three floors, an open ground floor, a second floor with balcony on four sides, and a third prayer hall on the roof, with a commanding view over most of the houses and the valley. After several days' absence, there is much to discuss for the Tulkus responsible for Kordong Monastery. Preparations for a very specific ritual are taking place. The rehearsal of movements, checking items, and coordinating various monks and villagers who will be involved.
Meanwhile, Tulku Serang Nima is keen to show us the new school for the novices he funded and inaugurated in 2005. Such a school is referred to locally as a shedra and is of utmost importance in upholding the tradition. It's here that the young ones learn everything from their elders. Grammar, philosophy, rituals, astrology, even English and geography. Previously, most children from Kordong had to go to other monasteries with a shedra in order to complete their education in the Buddha Dharma. But unfortunately, most of them were of different lineages making it difficult to secure the transmission of the Kordong Zhangte tradition in all its details from one generation to the next. It is with a relief and confidence that today we can watch the training of these young monks. Continuity is maintained. Tulku Nobu, who has been abbot of Kordong Monastery for many years, is also a family man and wants to take us down by the river to meet his family and discover another side of Kordong Gompa. As a grandfather and a learned one, Tulku Nobu teaches his grandson the alphabet, getting him ready to join the Shedra. Surrounded by his yaks and fields, Tulku Nobu looks after his family as well as the monastery activities. On the way up, we pass this rock where sadly the handprint of Kordong Turchin, Nudan Dorje Dropan Nipa, could be clearly seen until it got shot at during the Cultural Revolution. Everybody is now busy preparing for the Tartuk ritual, which starts in five days' time. This is unique, as it consists of four different rituals performed at the same time. It's specially designed to clear obstacles for the community. This Tartuk ritual is so unusual that the last time it was performed at Kordong Gompa was 12 years ago. And it's for this reason that the central part will be led by the very well-versed Tulku Pema Tenzin from Sikchung Monastery. Meanwhile, the effigies are being prepared and all sorts of ingredients for the ritual are being made or collected. In the preparation of this three-dimensional mandala, everybody finds something to do. From preparing the clay, to weaving intricately colorful strings, cutting sticks, drawing forms, pasting symbols, making tormas, checking in the ritual text for confirmation, going shopping, collecting plants and animal fur, all the inhabitants of Kordong Monastery contribute to the process. In the background, you can hear some preparatory rituals led by Tulku Percy.
While everybody is getting things ready, we have the time to take a look at the surroundings. Kordong Monastery has a long history. Padmasambhava first came to the region in the 8th century to bless it, and recognized this site then as an auspicious place for the practice of the Dharma. He was followed later by one of his closest disciples, Nupchen Sangye Yishi, who built a big prayer wheel here, from which the monastery takes its name. Over the centuries, a succession of great saints have come here to practice in solitude. But in the 12th century, the tantric master Ringa Shangwa Amgon was the first one to establish himself at this sacred place. He practiced here for the rest of his life, until he passed away at the age of 110. In his time, there was only one house, but as more masters came, more houses were built. The first temple was built in the 16th century, when Sangye Dorje came from Banai Monastery, and this is the starting point of a community of the Jangta tradition here. In the 19th century, the treasure revealer, Turchin Rinpoche Nudan Dorje Dropan Lingpa, established himself a little outside the monastery on the western side, in a house hidden in the hill, to practice the Jangta and write down the teachings he had revealed in adjacent valleys. Giving Kordon Monastery its particular role as the seat of his newly revealed teachings. Thus was born the Kordong Jangta lineage. This is the house of Tertian Rinpoche, where his relics are kept together with those of the great masters of Kordong, Tulku Solo, Tulku Gyermet Dorje, and Tertian Tulku Chime Rigsin, the fourth incarnation of Tertian Rinpoche who took his teachings to India, and then the West. Onpo Chodin is the keeper of the house, and spends most of his time in meditation. The final stages of the preparation are now taking place in the main prayer hall. More tormas of various shapes and colors are being made, while at the same time, the main three-dimensional mandalas are being assembled. While this is going on, there is a constant checking of the texts to make sure that all the details are correct. All the effigies are now in place, each one embodying its own particular symbolic meaning. Whereas the numerous tormas, each represents a particular deity. Everything seems to be ready, but it all depends on Tulku Perse's final check. On either side of the prayer hall, two rituals are being performed simultaneously, each monk focusing totally on his part.
The central character is Tulku Pema Tenzin, who with his training and powers of concentration will visualize the mandala and invoke the main deity, a rising wisdom and compassion, while dissolving obstacles through the practices of exorcism using the famous ritual dagger or kila. These rituals will be repeated over and over again for four consecutive days, with a mixture of purification practices, exorcism, and long life blessings. Tulku Gurmet Dorje, who was the abbot of Kordong Monastery until the start of the Cultural Revolution, is revered as a highly realized master and revealer of hidden teachings. As the practices are going on, we can feel the intensity rising. All those who are not performing are now packed into the prayer hall. Many types of offerings are made, but especially new clothes, jewelry, and embroidery. The purification practice is reenacted daily with the placing of a molded image symbolizing the enlightened mind on everyone's head. They are then collected and washed before being sent down to the river. Now is the time of dissolution. The ritual comes to its end. All the negative energies and the offerings are gathered together and taken outside to be cast away.
Meanwhile, the last purification practice is being performed on the crowd. Once everything has been completed, everybody takes the bags, effigies, and every single part of the mandalas to the trucks waiting outside. To ensure that all obstacles, tensions, sickness and negative influences in the community are dispelled for good, Tulku Persi and Tulku Pema Tenzin put on the robes of the great and fierce Mahakala, the main protector of the Buddha Dharma, to call upon his energy and blessings for the very final act of the ritual. The last prayers and aspirations are recited in front of the dismantled mandala and the last offerings to the protectors are made. Fully blessed, liberated and subdued, it is taken far, far away in a convoy to the greatest joy of the community who can now live in peace. As the trucks drive away and the prayer hall is being cleared, it is time to remember impermanence, a key tenet of Buddhist teachings. To make our journey complete, we are now returning to Soni, to the sacred mountain where in the 19th century, Kodong Turchin, Nudan Dorje Dropan Lingpa, revealed many of the hidden teachings allotted to him by Padmasambhava in the 8th century. It is an exceptionally beautiful, wild place, surrounded by deep forests, which unfortunately are being ravaged for the needs of the 21st century. Here we enter a protected zone which is under the stewardship 
of Kordong Monastery. In this sacred place, abode of the deities Pagma Tamdrin and Dorje Pagmo, the two mountains stand side by side. We are now on the side of the mountain Pagpa Tamdrin. Soon we come to a rock where Turchin Rinpoche extracted the hidden teachings, known in Tibetan as Terma. You can see the visible traces in the stone where each piece was taken out. These pieces can either be in the form of ritual objects, statues, caskets or simple scrolls. These are kept in the deepest confines of Kordong Monastery. Further along the path, we come across the second Terma rock, distinctively marked by the letter Hung. The teachings revealed here were practiced in solitude by Tertian Rinpoche for many, many years before writing them down at Kordong Monastery. On the other side, at the Dorje Pagmo mountain, the wrathful Dikini, many termas were also revealed. Passed down in an unbroken lineage and practiced in solitude, these teachings were finally taken by the fourth incarnation of Tertian Rinpoche, Tertian Tulku Chime Rigzin, first to India and then to Europe, where they are still actively practiced today. We have finally arrived at the hermitage of the founder of the Kordong lineage. <coughs> These Mani Mantras manifested themselves in the cliff due to the enlightened qualities of Turchin Rinpoche and a result of his true faith. These are not made by man. They are Ranjong, meaning self-arising in Tibetan. Kordong Turchin Nudon Dorje Dropan Lingpa drew these letters in his blood 150 years ago. These are the manifestations of Turchin Rinpoche's profound realization. These are the signs left behind for us as a reminder of the wonder of the Guru. Sir. 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 Samba. Samba. Uma, uma. Uh -huh. The lineage is secure in India. The practice is thriving in Europe. And we are all awaiting the arrival of the fifth reincarnation. All is good. <laughs>